Target 8.2, Day 1, Graph Rational Functions. So today we are going to spend graphing rational functions, identifying domain range and what the asymptotes are of each function. So here is an example of a parent function for simple rational functions. And so we're going to call it a simple rational function because the denominator is just going to be x. And so that makes it a simpler rational function. So the parent function is y, or I'm sorry, f of x equals 1 over x. And that is um, the shape of it is called a hyperbola. Okay, so the shape of our rational is called a hyperbola. And it's going to consist of two symmetrical parts, which we call branches. So if you look over here on the graph, the two branches are the two parts of the function. So the domain and range are all non-zero real numbers for these functions. Um, but there is going to be asymptotes here that we will uh, take a look at really quick. Um, when it is a simple rational function, when the denominator is just x, then your asymptotes are going to be x equals 0 and y equals 0. Okay? And the reason that this is is because we cannot divide by 0. So we cannot divide by 0. And so this is why we cannot have 0 for your x value, and we can't have 0 for your y value either. So let's look at an actual example so we can see this. So graph the function y equals 6 over x, and then we want to compare it to the parent function, which is y equals 1 over x. So once again, because we have a denominator here, we cannot divide by 0. We can't divide by 0. And so because we can't divide by 0, we can't have a y value that's equal to 0 either in this example. So what we need to do is we start by graphing the asymptotes. So when the denominator is x, Our asymptotes are always x equals 0 and y equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and graph those as dashed lines in my graph. So here is where x equals 0. And here is where y equals 0. Okay. And that's because we cannot divide by 0. And then we want to use our calculator and graph some points. You can also just draw a table um, if you want to make a table, just a little xy table here. Plug in some numbers. So numbers that will go into 6 divided by x, well, 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2, 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3, and we get 6 divided by positive 2 would give us positive 3, and 6 divided by positive 3 will give us negative 2. And so here is a set of points that we can graph. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, and then 2, 3, and 3, 2. So once we get at least a couple points on each of our branches, we draw in the curves. And you want to draw in the curves so that they do not touch the asymptotes. So they're going to approach but not touch the asymptotes here. And so that would be a basic graph of our rational function here.
So now, next, what we're going to look at is graphing some translations of these functions. And here's the important thing you need to remember. We're going to have H and K, again, representing our transformation. Um, it's going to be translating, moving the graph. And that's going to change what your asymptotes are. Okay, so when your numerator is a constant A value, okay, so the numerator is a constant, then your H value is going to be the first asymptote and your K value is going to be your second asymptote. Okay, so we will then, after we get the asymptotes drawn in, we will plot our points again and draw in the two branches. So let's go ahead and look at an example here. So we want to graph y equals negative 4 over x plus 2 minus 1. And then we want to state what are the domain and range of the function. So what we want to do is we want to say that... We want to compare it to y equals a over x minus h plus k. Okay, so in this example here, our h value is actually negative 2 because remember it's always minus h, so the h value is negative 2, and then the k value is negative 1. And so what this is going to mean is that our asymptotes are at x equals h, so negative 2, and y equals k, which is negative 1. And so we want to actually draw those in at x equals negative 2, and y equals negative 1. Okay, so those are, and I'll go ahead and label them too, negative 1 and x equals negative 2. So next we want to use our calculator or however you want to calculate what some of these points are going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and make an xy table. And I'm going to use my calculator to find some integer values. So there are a few. We're going to get negative 4, 1. We're going to get negative 3, 3. Negative 1, negative 5. And 0, negative 3. So what you're going to notice when we plot these points, which is our last step, we get negative 4, positive 1, negative 3, positive 3. It's going to open differently than the parent function did. And the reason for that is because we have this negative 4 out front. Okay, so then we'll get 0, negative 3, and negative 1, negative 5, and this is going to be the second part of our hyperbola, the second branch of the hyperbola. Okay, so we want to talk about what are the domain and range. So the domain is going to be all real numbers except the asymptote. So except negative 2 because that is the asymptote. Is where x equals negative 2. And so similarly, the range is going to be all real numbers. Except negative 1. And once again, that's because that's where the asymptote is is that y equals negative 1.
So here is one more example that we'll talk about. Um, example three, we're going to graph rational functions where we have a binomial in both the numerator and in the denominator. So all rational functions of the form y equals ax plus b over cx plus d also have graphs that are hyperbolas. So the vertical and horizontal asymptotes are going to be slightly different here. And so it's going to be really important to note this. So the vertical asymptote will take the denominator and basically we set it equal to zero. So we're going to set the denominator equal to zero to find the asymptote here. Okay. Then the horizontal asymptote, you take your leading coefficients and you divide them. And so you get y equals a divided by c for this one. Okay, so let's walk through example three here together and let's find out where are the asymptotes. So um, to find your first asymptote, you set the denominator equal to zero. So first we set denominator equal to zero. Okay, so x minus three equals zero means that x equals three is going to be our first asymptote. So x equals 3 is the first one. Now to find the other asymptote, our horizontal one, we do y equals a divided by c. And so in this case our a value is 2 and our c value is 1, so we do 2 divided by 1, which is just 2. So y equals 2 will be our second asymptote. So go ahead and graph those in. So here's x equals 3. Here's y equals 2. All right, so now what we're going to be doing is plotting points again. And so what you're going to notice this time is that some of the points are not integers in your calculator, and that's okay. But I still want you to make a little xy chart and pick at least two points on each branch to go ahead and graph. So I'm going to get 0 and negative 1 third as of my first pair of points, 2, negative 5. I'll also have 4, 9, and 6, and what will come out to be 13 thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and graph each of those four points. And then I go ahead and I draw in the branches here. Ooh. Intersecting my points. <clears throat> All right. And then our last step here is to state what are the domain and range. And just like before, your domain and range are based on your asymptotes. So wherever your asymptote is, that is a value that you will never have. You will never be able to reach that value. So x is all reals 
accept three. And y is all real numbers except two. All right, so tomorrow we'll do plenty more practice with the different types of graphing here, and we will continue on with some more graphing on Wednesday. See you then.